Hi everyone, my name is Rob Power. I'm a mobile learning researcher and I'm also an adjunct professor of educational technology with the University of Ontario Institute of Technology. I was recently asked during one of my Adobe Connect synchronous sessions with one of my Masters of Education classes to give some tips and tricks on how to get started with the writing process for final papers, academic papers in APA format. And what my students were looking for was not just uh, the formatting tips, but how to actually get started with the process of getting your thoughts on paper after you have done the process of doing your research and finding all your useful resources. So I gave a few tips and tricks during the session, but I'm producing this video to put them in a more permanent format and to share them with anybody who would like to use them. So first of all, I'm going to start with a template that I produced for my students. This template uses APA format, so once you got your template in place and all of your formatting that you want to use, you're ready to get started with actually putting in some content. And you can see in this template that we've got our major headings in place. That is how I tend to start with my paper writing. I'll come up with my title for the paper, which may change as I get working through the paper. I put in my headings for my abstract, my introduction, background information, or literature review, or whatever it needs to be called for your particular paper, and my different levels of heading, a heading for my conclusions, and of course a heading for my references and now I'm ready to get started. As you can see, most of this is blank right now except for some sample text that I have in there. It can be very hard to actually sit down and put your thoughts to paper, especially after you have done a lot of reading and research and you've got a lot of resources at hand. So what I like to do, I actually save writing the abstract for the very last because now uh, at that point I'll know exactly what the paper is about and I can write a nice short catchy abstract that is going to get the reader's attention and is going to let them know exactly what the paper is about. And what I'll do then is go to the body of my paper, I'll skip the introduction, I'll skip the conclusion, I'll do those uh, last right before doing the abstract, and I'll work on the body of my paper. And what I'm going to do is actually get uh, some of the quotes, some of the nice uh, tidbits that I've gotten from the uh, sources that I have been researching. And in this case I've saved all of my sources into a folder called resources library and what I'm going to do is get some quotes uh, out of these. These are Word documents that I've kept on each of the papers that I have uh, read for my sample paper which is my paper about using the stuff to do the stuff. So I'm going to start with this one here, Ali, 2014 and uh, you can see that in my file I've started with my full APA reference and I've got some useful information pulled out of here that I got from the article and what I'd like to do is just uh, extract a quote from this. I've highlighted a quote that's of interest to me and I'm going to go and take that and put that over in my paper. So I'm going to put that in here under my background information. Now I might need to just hit the normal button here and change my formatting back. Now this should be in Times New Roman in this case for this template so I'm just going to double check on my formatting and 12 point. Okay now I don't want this unhighlighted bit so I'm going to take that out put in my ellipses. This is a quote that's obviously over 40 words so it's going to be an indented quote. I'm going to remove my highlight from this and I'm just going to put in my in-text citation and just to make sure that I don't have any typos in there I'm going to go back here and get the actual spelling from my reference and get the page reference. So that is on page 145. 
So now I've got a nice in-text citation ready. And when I'm ready, I'll go and write some introductory text, my introductory paragraphs around that quote. And I'm going to actually indent this entire paragraph because it's a block quote. And now I have yet another paper here with um, a nice quote from Kenny et al. So I want to take this quote as well. I've already got my page number in this one, which is great. I'll go back to my template. And I'm going to write some more intro stuff around that when I'm ready. I save writing all that intro stuff on for when I have all of these nice little tidbits in place. So let's say that's all that I want for the introductory section of my paper is those two quotes and I'm going to write my material around it. Now I'm good to go for that. I'm going to go on to adding in some other types of uh, little tidbits that I've gotten from some of my uh, research. The first one here is going to be a chart. I want to put in a chart that I found uh, or a table that I found that actually has some useful info. So in that case I have another source here Power 2015 that has a uh, table in it. I want to take this entire table and put that here in my paper. So my table is there ready to go. Now obviously this is not going to be table 2, it's going to be table 1 in this case. And I'm going to add my source here as an in-text citation. And of course I will write some intro text around that and summary text around that. And I have a useful figure that I want to add here as well that I got from another source. In this case, that source is going to be Cole 2009. I have a figure of the frame model. I have that saved here as well. So I will go and insert that picture. And of course, I will need to add my caption to that after as well. And then I'll write my uh, caption down here. Figure one. Frame model. Call 2009. In this case, I asked for her permission before using it for a paper. So used with permission. So if you have contacted the original producer of a diagram, that's what you would do. You would say used with permission, or if they grant you permission on a website or something like that, you add that in there. Otherwise, you just put the in-text citation. And now I'm ready to start my references. Just to make it easier to look at, I'll put that on a separate page down here. I will go to all of these little files that I've opened up. I've got my APA references ready there from when I took my notes when I was studying. Here's my first one. My second one. And I have one here for Cole 2009. And when we're doing APA formatted papers, you actually make sure you remove the hyperlinks from this. You don't keep the hyperlink in there. And my last one, Power 2015.
So now I'm ready to start with writing the body of my paper around all of the nice little bits of supporting evidence that I've picked out from my background reading and research. And I've already got my reference list in place and all my in-text citations in place, so it's going to make my job a heck of a lot easier because now that my supporting evidence is in place, I just need to tell the story that I want to weave with all these pieces of the puzzle that I've put in place.